Well, joining us now, a very special guest, Margaret Alva, five-term member of parliament, a lawyer, a former union minister and governor, and somebody who's really championed uh, the Women's Reservation Bill, the cause of women as public representatives. Thanks, ma'am, very much for being with us. But ma'am, I must ask you, I mean, we all welcome this. It's, it's decades Pleasure too late, to but here. fortunately it's here. Now, it was the Vajpayee government which had actually brought the bill at least six times to parliament. But each time, it was the Congress and its allies which were unable to push it through. It was scuttled for one reason or the other. In fact, the Vajpayee government didn't have a majority in certain cases, was dependent on the opposition to push it through. That didn't happen either. So ultimately, is it the fault of the Congress and your allies in not having been able to push this earlier on? No, I don't agree here at all. The initiative for the reservation bill was taken by the Rajiv Gandhi government. I was minister for women. Rajiv Ji was the prime minister. It was his idea and his real desire to bring this bill to parliament. As you know, when it came in 89, it was, I mean, when it came the first time, in, the proposal was made in 89 by a committee headed by me, which was the National Perspective Plan, which we presented. And that gradually turned into law, I mean, was to turn into law. But there was opposition and therefore Rajiv Ji said we have to stoop to conquer and started with the panchayats. We were able to bring the bill to parliament, but that was defeated by the opposition. It was only after Rajiv Ji's assassination and when P.V. Narsimarao Ji became Prime Minister, sentiment ruled and as a tribute to Rajiv Ji, the bill for reservations in the panchayats and the urban local bodies was passed. That's why we have over 16 lakh women today elected to the local bodies. But the next step, which was envisaged, to bring this to the assemblies and to parliament didn't work out because not the Congress, the opposition parties were not prepared to support it. But let me tell you one thing, even without the RJD and the Samajwadi party, the bill, I mean, could have become a law in the Lok Sabha if the um, Modiji's government had brought it in. The Congress was supporting, Mamta is supporting, the left is supporting, most of the region, including the, um, the ARP is supporting, all the regional parties are supporting. The no, numbers I think that are required the are earlier situation. there in the Lok Sabha. What, the, what the, the BJP actually points out is that... Earlier and, and it was the opposition. Con I'm sorry. The Congress has always stood, it's in our manifesto. I've been the no, no, minister No, ma'am, I'm not talking about the Congress. It I know it's been in, in the, Congress the Congress manifesto. Has not I know it. the left parties have been wanting it. It's your allies yes. who are presently your allies in the India Alliance who are problematic. In, in fact, that's my next question. How will the India Alliance work on this key issue now? The RJD, the Samajwadi Party, uh, you know, they are a complete, they have been completely opposed to this. My point is that, that in the Lok Sabha, you need to have two-thirds of the majority, which we will have even without them. And I don't think on voting inside the House, the Alliance has to vote arm block. You will have different policy opinions from different parties. We are talking about fighting elections together outside. And let me tell you one thing. I don't think any party today on the eve of the Lok Sabha election is going to come out and oppose the bill. I don't see anybody doing it in the present context. That's an interesting point, ma'am. But uh, just there is remember one point in 2010, I wish to make. I well, ma'am, in 2010, um, and this is again going back, Mulayam Singh Yadav had once said, that if the women's reservation bill is passed, parliament will be filled with women who invite catcalls and whistles. 
uh, these were deeply regressive statements. Again, regressive statements uh, by a leader uh, whose party remains yes. a key part of the India alliance. What I'm trying to ask you, ma'am, is do you believe that these, reg the, these views, some would say very sexist views and regressive views are done and dusted and that collectively parliament is ready for the next step? We are almost 15 years past 2010. And I can tell you one thing, that the mindset of the new generation, which is heading these parties, is not the same. They realize that women have to be given a place and have to find a voice in elected chambers and become part of the decision-making process. But let me say one thing here. I was so happy when, they, when the news came last evening that the bill was being introduced today. In fact, it is the tribute that, I mean, in, it is a tribute to women that in the new parliament building, the first bill to be taken up or to be introduced is the women's reservation bill. It is 75 years after independence we have been shut up for too long. Though we had a prime minister for 16 years who was a woman, the women are still not present in sufficient numbers to in any way influence legislation or laws. Therefore, I was so happy when this announcement finally came that we were going to have the bill and I congratulated the government. But the devil is in the script, as they say. No, it is. Which now actually, ma'am, brings me to my next question, will which is happen. this. Sure. The devil is in the script, and we're all waiting to, to fully understand that script, because there is a view um, that the reservation of seats and in Parliament restricts I, the choice of voters to yes. women candidates. Uh, therefore, some experts have suggested an alternate method such as reservation in political parties and dual member constituencies. Now, so far there is no evidence that they are going to do a dual member constituency. But do you believe that this is something which needs to be looked at at all since our basic premise is of equality? The, uh, Shom, this was, this, was this was suggested earlier. This was discussed. This was taken up in the Joint Parliamentary Committee on the Reservation Bill and it was rejected. Yes. As it is, women are not given a voice and you want them tied up with a man in a constituency. Do you think he's going to allow her to function? Do you think he's going to in any way encourage her to perform her duties and to prove her worth? It's crazy. It's like tying up a woman to a man's legs in a constituency and saying whether he kicks you or he pulls you, you will stand by him. This is absolutely crazy, even the suggestion. Ma'am, the rotation but of reserve constituencies... I can constituencies, tell you one thing, is that... The, the rotation of reserve constituencies in yes, every election... That we have... That, that, that is something that's going to happen. How would you, ma'am, respond to those who say that this may reduce the incentive yes. for an MP to work in his or for, a, or for that matter in her constituency as they may be ineligible to seek re-election from that same constituency the next time around. Let me tell you one thing. In the proposed bill which we had drafted, it was supposed to be reserved for two consecutive elections. That's 10 years. I see. And during that time, a woman would have the and would have the opportunity to prove her capacity and move forward. In fact, if you look at the panchayats today, so many women are getting elected from general seats after the reservation is changed. You have 33% reservation in the panchayats, but in my own state, Karnataka, we have reached reaching almost 60%. Women are fighting from the constituencies and winning even after they have been de, um, sorry, uh, even after in rotation, they have been taken off the reserved list. They are de-reserved. 
And therefore, uh, we had suggested, and this was the general consensus, that the rotation should, I mean, the seat should change after two elections. Ten years. And that the reservation would continue for 30 years. 30 years in all, that is to say one third, one third, one third, mm -hmm. that each one third uh, number would have 10 years. Right. This was the idea and that after that election, after 10 years, she was free to contest from that constituency as a general candidate. Right, right. Nothing to prevent her in the bill from contesting as a normal a general candidate. That is the second thing. It is. Uh, the third thing it was. It is, of course, ma'am, absolutely. Well, I'm sorry, there's a bit of a time delay between uh, us as we speak, but I'm just having to wrap this up because I'm short on time. But it is absolutely a wonderful day, I think, for, for Indian democracy. Okay. And if this results in greater representation of women and the voice of women. No, but in the I, want to, levels, I want to make. I want to make. I want to make one final point before you wind up. Go ahead, ma'am. As matters now stand, this will become a reality. This will become a reality only after 27. Yes. So today yes. it is just a headline opportunity as it were. And it is not going to benefit us even in the coming election or maybe not even in the next election. But it will be on the statute book. Um, Ma'am, on that point, it's it's interesting that you brought that up. Um, there is the, the the entire process of the census and the delimitation, which has to happen first. Wouldn't you agree that anything as important as yes. reservation for women should take place only once we have a new census, once the delimitation is actually done? Is there any option but to delay till that happens? This sense. The this census was supposed to come in 21. You didn't do it. It has been delayed. You are expecting it in 26. And then after that, by the time it, the figures are put together, it will be another year. Then will come delimitation, which will take at least a minimum of two years. So nothing before 29. So what are we all uh, talking about today saying, oh, the bill has come, the bill has come. Yes, it will. It has come. It will come. I presume on the statute book, but women are not going to benefit till almost the end of this decade. All right, that's obvious. Sobering thoughts over there, but uh, it is still wel welcome if it becomes legislation. It would hopefully happen sooner than later. But thanks, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for speaking to us, and uh, and it's very always welcome. wonderful. We welcome it. Getting your thoughts. Thanks very much, ma'am.